Hi everyone, welcome to the live stream today. So great to see everybody on here. It's really a lot of fun to see a lot of returning um, fellow gardeners every single week. I really love, I know I say this every week, but I love how people are getting to know each other in the chat, saying welcome, how's your garden doing, how's the weather in your neck of the woods, and it's really great to build a garden community. So I wanna welcome you guys, and super exciting that we are so close to to spring I absolutely can't believe it it's the day after tomorrow I mean can you guys believe it I know for a lot of you it's been a really long winter super cold lots of snow and I know here in California although we don't get the cold weather that a lot of you get we've had the coldest winter we've had in years so we are super happy that the weather is warming up and um, we are we're still gonna get some rain I think this week but at least the weather is warm yesterday was an absolutely gorgeous day around 80 degrees it's about the same today so spring fever has definitely hit I know it has for a lot of you too so just want to say hello to you guys from all over the world here we have Kimberly Valentine how are you starting sunflower seeds in your kitchen window learn to grow from the Pacific Northwest how are you doing Gina Joseph Melinda from Kansas actually from New Hampshire, I, be I believe, Evelia. I saw someone watching from uh, South Africa. So people here from all over the world um, supporting each other in our quest to grow our own food, be healthier, happier, and uh, do it in a quick, simple, inexpensive way. So big shout out to Everything Sunflowers and More for moderating. She does a great job every single week please check out her Instagram, um, Everything Sunflowers. She does a lot with um, monarch butterflies. She's a master gardener, so she knows a lot about gardening. She's a very dear friend and lives in Florida, and she's really always so happy and supportive um, to be here and to answer all of your questions and to keep us on, the, um, on track here. So I see someone even watching from Romania, from England. Super exciting guys, thanks a lot for joining me today. I'm gonna to share that so, some of my favorite um, spring garden tips to help you get your spring garden going. So um, before we do that though, I just wanna mention that this purple smart pots right behind me here are back in stock. We were out of them for a couple of days. They were super popular and sold out last week, but I rushed an order here. Um, from smart pots so that you guys could have them in time to start growing your spring garden So if you want to pick one up, you can have, head over to my website Which is callikimgardenhome.com click on the smart pots tab and you can order the purple one which is um, I think it's about a 15 gallon size It has about three feet of growing space or you can order this black one That's right here behind me a really great way to get going on your spring garden in a really super easy way And a great way to grow with your kids as well so let me just read here the viewer of the week. If, you, if you're a regular here on the live stream, I like to um, choose a comment that really inspired me or meant something to me from the um, videos over on YouTube or an email that I got and read it out here on the live stream. And today's viewer of the week is Rosa Leon. And she commented, I believe it was on the video we just posted yesterday. Um, on acclimating your seedlings, your indoor seedlings to the outdoors. And I loved her comment, and I'll tell you why in just a second after I read it. Um, she says, I failed in the process of growing seedlings, was unsuccessful in maintaining the correct temperature. Therefore, my plants never matured. I will have to purchase the eggplant and peppers. Maybe some tomato plants, not sure yet. Got radish and spinach growing in the garden, trying to stay motivated. I really want to grow my own vegetables and fruit. And I don't know about you guys, but I can relate to this because so many times, um, especially when I first started gardening, I was wondering why didn't my seedlings germinate and I felt like I failed. But I just wanna encourage Rosa. I love the fact that she's Keep it on going, she's not giving up. Um, she wants to grow her own fruits and vegetables. She's gonna figure out why, and she's even identified maybe a reason um, why she was having trouble. And in my eyes, it's not a failure at all. It's just a learning experience. So Rosa, I just wanna tell you, thank you so much, number one, for being honest and sharing how you feel, for not being afraid to do that, and just for um, you know putting it out there and asking for the support of the garden community. We're all here for you. If any of you have ever felt that way, don't 
don't give up. Just treat your quote unquote failures as learning experiences and keep on trying and figuring out um, what's going wrong. Ask the question and find out what's going on. You will be successful. You are successful. Even just the fact that you're trying to grow your own food is absolutely wonderful. And if you can't grow everything from seed, don't worry about it. If you need to purchase transplants from the garden center, absolutely okay. Sometimes we're getting late, we're getting late, uh, we're late getting our seeds started and we have to purchase a couple transplants. I do that all the time. Um, so go for it as long as you're growing your own fruits and vegetables, whatever you're growing at home, it's gonna be that much better than what you buy in the grocery store. So um, anyway, thanks a lot, Rosa, and congratulations for being viewer of the week. Make sure you comment on the videos, on Instagram, on Facebook, or send me an email. And you never know, you might get a shout out here on the live stream, so super exciting for that. Okay guys, what I'm gonna do here is share one of my favorite spring garden tips and then head back into the chat to um, answer some questions. And I wanna hear your tips as well. Okay, so my first tip for getting your spring garden ready for growing vegetables is number one, start some seeds. Okay, that might seem like a really basic thing, but start some seeds and do a little bit every day. So get something planted each and every day so you don't get overwhelmed. I know for me, I get super excited. I wanna start everything at once and then all of my seedlings are ready to plant in the garden at once and sometimes it feels just a little bit overwhelming. So what I've been trying to do is just start something every day. Okay, even if you just start a couple little um, lettuce seedlings, a little tray of lettuce seedlings like this, plant some seeds every single day. Whether you're starting something indoors or whether you're planting seeds right in the garden. So um, that is my favorite little tip to not get overwhelmed, not get stressed out. Just get some seeds planted and don't beat yourself up if you can't do everything all at once. We all have busy days, we all have busy lives, um, most of us work or have kids and we all have people that are important and priorities in our lives. Um, our garden is wonderful, but make sure that the people in your lives are priorities and try to include them with your seed starting as much as you can, whether it's your kids with the kids garden collection or whether you're starting seeds with the spring garden collection. So if you need seeds, you can grab, um, I have 20 different, I think almost 20 different seed collections on my website that will help you get started. So today actually, it's my goal to start some more lettuce seeds. So I wanna start another little tray of lettuce just like this so that um, when these are planted out in the garden, in about two more weeks, I'm gonna have some more um, little seedlings ready to go outside. So it might seem uh, pretty uh, elementary, but just get some seeds started, whatever you do. Now, I had a question earlier before the live stream started in the chat. And by the way, if you're not showing up a little bit early, I'm usually here about 15 minutes before the live stream starts. And it's really fun because people are asking a lot of questions and we're having a good time. Um, but someone had asked me, um, I forget what zone they were in, but they were saying their frost date was, I think the end of March, like the 31st of March. Is it too late to start indoors? Absolutely not. Um, it's not, I mean, ideally you wanna start four to six weeks before your last frost date. That way you get your seedlings, you can plant your seedlings out in the garden as soon as possible. But if your frost date's coming up, by all means, get your seeds started. If you're in a cold climate, get them started right now. If you're in California or a southern climate where it's nice and warm, you can, you can start them today, and then in about four weeks, they'll be ready to plant outside in the garden. So get your seeds started. Your transplants might not be as big on your last frost date as you'd like them to be, but no worries, you're still growing your own food. Okay guys, hopefully that tip will help you get your spring garden ready because spring is just a two, uh, few minutes away. And it looks like Camera Guy is here in the chat. Uh, hi Camera Guy, how's it going? He's chatting under um, my profile from work. So um, really glad to have him online and he's always a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed um, seeing him in the video yesterday. Okay, let me see what questions you guys have about spring garden, about seed starting. So just fire away here and I will answer as many questions as I can. But be aware, the chat does fly by really fast. So I'm doing my, the best I can to um, answer uh, people's questions, but I'm really sorry if I can't get to your question. 
Okay, let's see here. Question, question, question. Oh, here we go. Here's one. Actually, I don't know the answer to this one, Thomas. What's the best way to grow a cherry tree from seed? I have never grown a cherry tree. So if anybody out there has a, um, an uh, answer to that one, please pop it in the chat and maybe you can help Thomas out. Okay. Where did you get the dwarf lemon tree? I picked that up. I believe it was at Home Depot or Lowe's last year. Um, let's see here. Any other questions? Question about generation and light. Um, not too sure what you mean about, oh, germination probably and light. Um, if you could be a little bit more specific with your question, Maggie, I'd be, tr I'd try and answer that. Okay. Question here from Shirley. Is it too late to start tomato and bell pepper seedlings indoors? I live in Arizona. Absolutely not. Get them started, especially in Arizona. You can, as soon as you um, get them started and they've grown indoors for about four weeks, they're getting to be a good size. It's plenty warm enough there. You can acclimate them and then get them planted in your garden as soon as possible. Okay, question from Wanda Wynn. I will be moving to San Diego What in June. What can I plant then? You can plant just about anything you want to in San Diego in June because here in California, we have a very long growing season. So I would suggest Gina to watch the um, Spring Garden series and that'll give you all kinds of tips um, as to vegetables you can plant. You probably will wanna plant some warm weather vegetables. Um, uh, I mentioned all those in the spring garden series. You could probably plant some lettuce as long as you keep it shaded because I know it does get pretty hot um, in California in June. And as long as you keep it shaded for maybe the afternoon, um, you can get some growing there in June. So check out the Spring Garden series, guys. We are having so much fun with that. If you want to, if you need more information on how to start seeds indoors, what to start this time of the year, how to water, fertilize, um, acclimate your seedlings to the outdoors, there's so much great information there. So make sure you go back and watch that Spring Garden series because that's why we post those videos so that you have all the details. I can answer a few questions in the live stream, but go back and watch those videos for all of the great details. Okay. Oh, I see Angie here um, clarified her question. Is it okay not to turn off the light? Okay, Angie, I'm thinking you might mean um, right when you plant your seeds while you're waiting for them to germinate. Um, what I like to do when my seedlings are brand new fresh or my seeds are brand new fresh in little peat pellets before they've germinated is yes, I do like to leave the lights on for 24 hours a day because as soon as those um, seeds break the surface of the soil, I really want them to have that bright, intense light because that's what's gonna help them grow nice and strong and not get leggy. So as soon as they germinate, um, you can really leave your, uh, your lights on for about 18 hours a day, turn them off for about six hours a day because they do need that period of darkness in order to, in order to grow well. Okay, so hopefully, Angie, that answered your question. Um, I'm going to head back now and talk about the second tip for um, getting your uh, spring garden going. So first tip was, guys, get some seeds going. Plant a few seeds every day. The second tip is, it's a great time now to start prepping your garden soil. So a lot of you are already growing your seedlings inside. You're starting the acclimation process, like we talked about from yesterday's video. And while that acclimation, while your seeds are um, getting acclimated, it usually takes about a week. It's a perfect time to start prepping your outdoor garden soil. So one thing I like to do is just choose the area where I'm going to be planting, clear out all the weeds, all the old plants from last year, um, just get rid of all that or compost what is able to be composted. Start pulling out the weeds and the rocks and start loosening up your soil, adding some compost, some really good soil amendments because your soil is probably depleted after growing last year. And it's a great time now to add in that compost, those worm castings. Um, good Dirt even has an amazing soil conditioner that you can add into your soil. Um, if you want to go that direction and that way as soon as your seedlings are acclimated and hardened off your garden bed is completely ready to roll and you can get those seedlings in just as soon as possible. So you do want to make sure if you're planting um, warm weather seedlings here I have my basil and peppers and some tomatoes um, hardening off here. Um, they've already been in the sunlight for about an hour today and I'm letting them sit in the shade for a couple of hours before I move them back inside. But they really like to be planted in warm soil, about maybe 50 degrees or so. So if, you, if the soil is still cold where you live, it might still be a little bit chilly to get those planted in, in the ground. 
after your frost date is passed. So what I like to do is um, cover up my garden bed after I've prepared it. I like to cover it up with some black plastic and then the sun comes through and that really helps solarize um, the garden bed and helps the soil warm up a little bit quicker. So just a little tip so that you can get your uh, seedlings planted just as soon as possible. So number one, to prepare your garden bed for spring, you want to um, plant some seeds. Plant a few seeds every single day, whether it's indoors or outdoors. Number two, now is a great time to start prepping your garden bed. Even if you just do a little bit of that every day as well. So as soon as your seedlings are ready, you are ready to get those seedlings inside, or I mean outside, and that way you can harvest and have those fresh, tasty vegetables that much sooner, which is what we're all dying for, especially at this time of the year. Okay, let me head back in the chat, answer some more questions. And I see a question here from Luz. Thank you so much, Luz, for tuning in today. You are a regular viewer and watcher here on the live stream. It's always great to see you. My green peppers are not doing so well. Is it too late to start them? Is it better to direct sow? Um, I prefer to start peppers indoors. I think they just grow a lot faster. You can definitely, um, you can direct sow them in the garden, but it is a little bit tricky. Um, peppers really do like that bottom heat. If you're having trouble getting them to germinate indoors, I would highly suggest getting a heat mat. They're not very expensive. I think they're um, maybe 11 or $12 on Amazon. I'll try and post the link um, in the video description and all you need to do is just set your little seedling tray right on top of the heat mat keep them under the light and they do take a little bit of time to germinate sometimes they can take 7 to 14 days sometimes the um, uh, hot peppers can take around 21 days to germinate. So Luz, if you're having trouble, just hang in there, be patient, but do make sure that you put them on top of a heat mat. Um, and that will make the germination, germination process go that much faster. Okay, let's see here. Alexa, Alexia, hi, how are you? What is your favorite way to grow strawberries? Okay, I love growing strawberries in the crate towers. You guys might have seen a couple videos that we've posted on that over the past several years. They really like um, the drainage. They, um, they just do great in crate towers. Um, we have, we line them with, um, Smart Pots has a really great crate liner. It's, um, it's the same fabric as the Smart Pots material here, which is a super heavy duty fabric. And we just pop them in the crates. They're the shape of a crate, pop them in there, pop some strawberries in the top, and then we even cut holes on the sides. That way you can grow a lot of strawberries in the crate tower. So you can go back and check out my videos on YouTube for how to do that. And the really fun thing is you can grow just about anything in the crate towers. We've done lettuce, kale, all kinds of stuff. It's a great way to grow a little bit or a lot in a little bit of space. And um, it's very, very easy to take care of. You can move it around um, depending on the sunlight or the shade that the, the plant um, you're growing um, requires. Okay, uh, here's another question. Here is a question from Philippe Conway. Hello, Philippe. What veggies do you recommend for low amounts of direct sunlight, four hours worth? Okay. There's actually um, quite a few vegetables that will do pretty well in direct sunlight. The first one I always recommend is lettuce. I mean, in four hours of sunlight. The first one I recommend is lettuce. Lettuce does great in just four hours of sunlight, as does kale. Um, especially if you live in a hot climate, it's great to plant lettuce where it just gets a few hours of morning sun and then afternoon shade. So um, that's what I try and do in the summertime with my lettuce. Um, the other thing that will grow well in um, partial shade or partial sun is, uh, that will do okay anyway, is small varieties of tomatoes. So if that's all you have to grow in, um, you might want to try some uh, cherry tomatoes and they just don't need as much sunlight to ripen as much as the big tomatoes do. Those will also do well in uh, partial, partial sun. So pretty much any greens, kale, um, bok choy, any of the green vegetables or leafy greens will do well in part sun as well. Okay, let me head back to my uh, tips today and then we'll come back to the chat and answer a few more questions. The third tip to um, 
let's see, the third tip to get your spring garden going is start, not only start some seeds indoors and, and sow those indoors every day, but also start some seeds outdoors. There's a couple of vegetables that are really early to start that you can get going in your garden even before your last frost date. And my favorite ones to start early outside are peas and lettuce. So those are super quick vegetables to grow. Um, you can usually get um, a harvest in about six weeks. So if you're getting close to your last frost, frost date, um, start some seeds indoors definitely, but also head outside and plant some pea seeds and some lettuce seeds right in your garden. And that way, as soon as the soil temperature is warm enough, they're gonna be there, they're gonna sprout, and you're gonna see some really good early crops of peas and lettuce. In fact, that's really the key to getting a lot of peas, or getting you know a really good crop of peas is to start them as early as possible in the spring. Because peas and lettuce don't like the heat, so that way if you get them started early, as soon as the weather gets hot, you're gonna have your, your crop, your harvest, and when the, the peas and the lettuce start to die out from the heat, you can get your warm weather vegetables going. So I do have a couple videos on YouTube you can check out for exactly how to do that. I have a video called Grow Lots of Lettuce and actually another one called Grow Lots of Peas and I do have one on growing kale as well. So make sure you head over and check out those videos for all the fun details. So I do wanna thank you guys for all of your support of our videos, of the live stream here, of our seed shop. Believe it or not guys, we are almost to 200,000 subscribers on YouTube and we we just want to thank you guys for all of your support and if you could do us a favor and share the videos share our posts and help us to get to 200k that would really be exciting so thank you guys so much for all of your support okay oh hi rod great to see you on here today um, Rod is joining us from Baja California I know you've had some great weather down there and Rod your question is have you direct sowed cucumbers outside or is it better to start indoors? Okay, I like to do both actually. I always like to have some going indoors because they get off to a really quick start indoors. Um, but it's also great to have them going outside. That way you always have plants at different stages of growth so you can keep the harvest coming. So Rod, if I were you, if you have the space, get some going that grow so fast so I usually like to start them inside in the little cups with soil or um, I know you like to start think, start your seeds in little those little red cups or you can just plant them right in the ground but if you get them going outside it's a it's a good idea to wait till after your last frost date when the soil temperature is warmed up maybe a few weeks after your um, last frost date and that way they'll germinate a whole lot quicker. If your ground is super wet or super cold, then they're just gonna kinda sit there and not do too much. So um, give that a go and hopefully that'll help you grow a lot of cucumbers. Okay, let's see what other questions we have here. The chat is flying by like crazy. Um, question here, if you, could, if you, yeah, if you could write question in front of your comment, um, that would be great, that way I can Spot it real quick and answer your question. Okay, how many tomato plants could you grow? This is from Raleen MJ. How many tomato plants can you grow in a four by three raised bed? Okay, I like to plant, I like to space my tomato plants um, a couple feet apart. So it really does depend on what variety you're growing. If you're growing a full size tomato plant, with big tomatoes, um, you definitely do wanna space them a few feet apart. So that would be about two, maybe you could squeeze in three in a four by three raised bed. If you're growing the um, dwarf varieties, like the little tiny Tim tomatoes that I absolutely love, those grow about two feet tall. They're an indeterminate tomato plant, which means they grow to a set height and then um, you harvest all the tomatoes within a few weeks time frame and then the plant dies. So if you're growing smaller plants, you might be able to fit uh, maybe four or five plants in there. So just t check the seed packet of the variety that you're growing, see the size that it gets to, what type of tomato it is, and that way you can um, gauge um, your spacing from there. Okay, let's see here. See what other questions we have here. Okay, hi Timothy, how are you? A question on what variety of lettuce is better to grow here in India and what's your favorite? Okay, I am thinking you probably get um, pretty hot weather there in India. I don't know about year round, but 
in the heat, lettuce is going to struggle once it gets above 80 degrees. So if you're under 80 degrees, then I would recommend planting a couple of heat tolerant varieties. And I do have a heat tolerant seed collection that has one uh, variety of lettuce in there that's very heat tolerant and that's Paris Cause Romaine. It's good for about, up to about 80 degrees. But what you might wanna do, since I'm sure it gets hotter there, is grow some other greens that are heat tolerant, such as kale. Um, I have a couple uh, good varieties of kale in there. The um, red Russian kale is one of my favorites and the blue scotch curled kale. There's also a couple varieties of spinach. New Zealand spinach is in the heat tolerant collection. I know the Malabar spinach is also very heat tolerant. A lot of people have recommended that to me. I've grown it a couple of times and that works really well. And yeah, I see someone else here is recommending Malabar. Um, it does great in the heat. It's also a really beautiful plant. It's a vining variety, so it grows really pretty on a trellis. Um, and I do have one other green in there. Oh, it's the chard. Chard and kale are amazing. They're super heat tolerant, very cold hardy. It's a good year round um, green to grow in the heat and in the cold. So give those, give those a try and hopefully that'll help you keep your greens going even in the heat. Okay, question here from Creative Courtney. Hi Courtney, how are you? Thanks for joining us today. What temperature range do peas prefer? Okay, peas are a cool weather vegetable, which means that they like temperatures between, well, up to about 75 or 80 degrees. They really prefer between about 50 to 75. Um, they will take a frost though. So if your peas are, are well established and then a frost hits, they're most likely gonna be okay. But once the weather hits around 80 degrees, what they're gonna do is you're gonna see them dry out from the bottom up. So a lot of people are really worried when they see that, but it's just the peas way of responding to the heat and saying, okay, it's too hot, I'm done. Don't worry about that if that happens. Um, just plant some more as early as you can um, right now in the spring or in the fall when the temperatures cool off. Okay, here's a question from Echocentric Homestead. Hi, how are you today? Thanks for joining us. Will a five gallon bucket work well as a self-watering, AKA wicking planter? Um, I've never tried that with a five gallon planter. I'm assuming it probably will. The one right behind me here, I've actually, you know, put place on a saucer and then filled the saucer with water. And yes, it does wick up the water if that's what you're referring to. So, um, you know, this one works really well because it's made, it's the smart pots. It's an aerated fabric and it, it, the fabric has really great drainage. So, um, it does soak up the water from the bottom very, very well. I've never tried it with a, um, five gallon bucket. But you know what? I would love it. I would love for you to give it a try and then report back to us. I love when people experiment in the garden and then can come back to the live streams or to the videos that we post and um, share um, what works for you and what you, um, what you learn from your experiences. Okay, growing lots of peas. Thank you, Christy, for posting that video. Mary says she's liking your smart pots. I believe you ordered some from me, didn't you, Mary, last week? Maybe the purple smart pots. So thank you so much for your order, and um, I really appreciate that. I'm glad it's working well for you. And by the way, guys, California Garden TV is on here, and you guys probably, uh, hopefully all of you watched the Kids Garden series. If you haven't yet, please go back and watch that. He has an awesome YouTube channel, and he, we did the Kids Garden video with him about a week ago. He just posted on his Instagram, or no, actually, yeah, it was, it was on his Instagram this morning, that the seeds that we planted in the purple smart pots just a week ago are already germinating. So if you haven't checked out his Instagram, please go over and check that out. Show him some love. He was kind enough to let us film in his garden and super exciting that his kid's garden um, seed collection is already germinating. Super, super exciting to see those seeds come up. So thank you so much for joining us today, Brian. Purple is my favorite color. It's so much fun, isn't it, to have this beautiful purple pop of color in the garden. For those of you that have ordered it, we're getting a lot of great feedback on the purple smart pot. So thank you so much for, um, for letting me know that. Okay, let's see here. Amy, another question. I, I can't remember if I answered this one or not, or yours or not. I don't want to keep transplanting my seeds, so that's why I'm asking what containers or trays should I start my seeds in? I also need to make sure I have enough room to put them under the lights. Okay, Amy, I always have that problem too. I'm always running out of space. Um, if you guys watch the Spring Garden series video on seed starting, please go back and watch that because I do um, talk about this in that video. I really do like to start my seeds when I can 
um, in the three inch pellets like this, which I'll link to these down below um, when this video uploads. And the main reason why is because it saves me the step of transplanting. Now these can stay, like a pepper or a tomato can stay in these pellets about four to six weeks before you put them out in your garden. So if you're about four to six weeks out from your frost date, then you won't have to transplant, okay? You can plant them in the larger peat pellets or in the little um, containers with soil. I don't have any right here to show you, but you can go back and watch that video to see how that looks. And that way, um, four to six weeks inside, your frost date hits, they're ready to go out in the garden, you can save yourself that extra step. The only, re the only reason why you might have to transplant them sooner is if the weather is not warm enough. So maybe they're getting too big, maybe the roots are showing out the bottom, um, they're getting, they're outgrowing their current container, then you might have to transplant them to give them a little bit more room to breathe before you can get them planted outside. So Amy, I hope that helps you out and you're able to um, save yourself as much time as possible there. Okay, the rudimental garden, gardener. Can't wait to get some cukes growing. Ran out of pickled relish last week. I bet your mouth is absolutely watering because garden fresh is absolutely the best. Nothing beats fresh, tasty vegetables from the garden, and I know you guys agree with me. That's why we're all here, right? Because growing your own is absolutely the best. The flavor is amazing, and I am just bursting at the seams to get out in my garden and start getting some vegetables planted. So hopefully we'll get to be doing that in just a couple of weeks. So make sure you guys do stay tuned to the Spring Garden Series because over the next few weeks, we are gonna be um, showing you how to prep your garden bed for planting. If you haven't done that yet, we'll be doing a video on that. We'll be planting our vegetables out in the garden. We'll be heading back to California Gardens House um, in a, probably two to three weeks to um, check on the progress of the kids' garden videos. And we'll have some other special videos coming over the next few months. So let me see if there's a couple more questions I can answer before we sign off. I hope you guys have enjoyed the spring garden tips today. Almost spring, do yourself a favor, celebrate in some way on Wednesday, plant some seeds, make sure you start prepping your garden bed, get your peas and your lettuce, your early spring crops planted outdoors, Definitely do something on Wednesday gardening wise to celebrate the fact that we all are itching for spring Okay, a couple more couple more questions or comments here and we will sign off for the week. We do live stream every Monday at noon Pacific time. So make sure you join us next week. And here is a wonderful comment from Diane. Thank you. We lost our daughter at Christmas and your channel is helping me get up and start seed. Diane, I am so sorry to hear about your daughter. My heart absolutely goes out to you and I know all of us here are supportive and thinking about you, our thoughts and prayers are with you and I am so happy that in some way we've been able to encourage you and be a part of your life and encourage you to get outside. Hopefully you're able to experience a little bit of peace and joy in the garden. Hang in there. I know it's, I, I can't imagine how hard it must be. One day at a time and we're here for you, okay? All right, guys, let's see how, if there's any more questions. Um, question, what's the best fertilizer for a lemon plant? Nisha, hi, how are you? I actually, guys, um, if you've seen my lemon plant on uh, pictures, I really wanted to do a lemon harvest video for you guys. I had a lemon ready to harvest and the wind blew it off the other day, so I'm not able to do a harvest video. But all I do to fertilize my, um, my lemon plant is I've been adding in, um, worm castings about once a month. I just sprinkle a little handful of worm castings and scratch it into the soil. And I've also been watering it with the worm tea and the Good Dirt plant food about once a week because it's in a container. And it's putting on some new growth. Uh, it has another lemon on it that'll hopefully be ready to harvest soon. So Nisha, give that a go and um, hopefully that'll work for you. But guys, do keep in mind too, make sure that if you ever, if you do purchase the Vermisteria worm castings and the Good Dirt, uh, plant food or the potting mixes or the soil conditioner, please make sure you use the, the codes um, because it does give you a discount on any of those products and it also helps our channel out as well. And um, you can get all that information in the uh, video description below. Okay guys, we're gonna go for one more question here to help kick off the, uh, the spring garden season here. Question from Samantha. What should we do if we have leggy plants? And this is looks like it's a broccoli seedling. Okay, Samantha, first off, what you wanna do if you're growing your plants inside, which I'm assuming 
that's what your question's all about. Make sure that you're keeping your seedlings just, just two inches from that light, because if they're not close enough to the light, they are gonna reach for the light source. So what you wanna do is have your grow light position directly above your seedling tray about two inches, and that way they won't have to stretch for the light. And you can head back and watch my video on um, grow lights. It's called Three Easy Grow Light Setups. It gives you all the information in there. And also you can watch the Spring Garden um, series on um, starting seeds indoors and you get all the information in there as well. Okay guys, this was a lot of fun today like usual. And we are going to sign off for today. But to make sure you tune in for this weekend's video and also for next Monday's live stream at noon Pacific time. I really want to thank you guys for all your support. Please subscribe to our channel. Help us get to 200,000 subscribers and hope you guys have a great week and happy spring. All right. Bye-bye guys.